Salamat sa Panginoon na uh, we have another opportunity this morning sa pagkangaral sa salita ng Panginoon to this devotional God's Word for today. Welcome sa inyong lahat at basahin ko ang ating talata sa John chapter 9 at i-continue ko ang pagbasa sa verse 18 hanggang sa verse 24. John 9 verse, 30, verse 18 hanggang sa 24. Hindi naniwala ang mga Hudiyo na siya ay dating bulag at nagkaroon ng kanyang paningin hanggang sa kanilang tinawag ang mga magulang ng lalaki na nagkaroon ng paningin. At tinanong sila, ito ba ang inyong anak na sinasabi ninyong ipinanganak na bulag? Paanong nakakita na siya ngayon? Sumagot ang kanyang mga magulang, alam namin itong aming anak at siya ay ipinanganak na bulag. Subalit kung paano siya ay nakakita ngayon, ay hindi namin alam o kung sino ang nagbukas ng kanyang mga mata ay hindi namin kilala. Tanungin ninyo siya, siya ay may sapat na gulang na at siya ay magsasalita para sa kanyang sarili. Ang mga bagay na ito ay sinabi ng kanyang mga magulang sapagkat natatakot sila sa mga hudiyo. Sapagkat pinakaisahan ng mga hudiyo na kung ang sinuman ay magpahayag na si Jesus ang Kristo ay palalayasin mula sa sinagoga. Kaya sinabi ng kanyang mga magulang, siya ay may sapat na gulang na tanungin ninyo siya. Dahil dito ay tinawag nilang muli ang taong dating bulang at sinabi sa kanya, Luwalatiin mo ang Diyos na lalaman namin makasalanan ang taong ito. Now, we've learned yesterday and the other days about this tension between the dialogues that Jesus had with the religious leaders called the Jews. Dito, they resorted to coercion. What a sad thing that when a person is already uh, running out of reasons, mag-coerce na siya. So anong nangyari? These stones religious fanatics, these religious leaders, refuse to accept the testimony of the man healed from blindness. Hindi nila talaga matanggap. But nobody can argue a changed life. And people could attest to that. Hindi lang isa kundi karamihan na who knew this guy from the beginning that he was the beggar, you know, sitting behind, you know, at the street, at the side of the street begging. Na ginaling ni Panginoon Su Cristo. So they did not satisfy from the testimony of this guy. So they went to his parents and interrogated them if he was truly their son. At paano siya ginaling ni Panginoon Kristo and became able to see. And ito namang mga magulang niya, they were so tactful and wise to say, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But how he now sees, we do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He will speak for himself. He is of age. Ask him. They were so wise. Ano pong rason na ganito po yung sagot nila? His parents would not speak for him and Christ. They did not mention the name of Christ. Although they heard maybe that it was Christ who killed him. Imposible naman na hindi nila matanong, Anak, ano bang nangyari sa inyo? Sino bang mabaling sa inyo? Of course, they will be inquiring anong nangyari sa kanya. And they mentioned, oh, he mentioned the name of Jesus. Pero hindi, may mention nila ang pangalan ni Panayon Kristo dito sa mga Hudiyo. Instead, sabi niya, wala kaming alam dyan. He is of AIDS. Tanungin niyo siya. Tama naman. He was, they were just wise. They were not lying. They were not, um, I say, you know, evading the, 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 the question. They were just directing that the information that they want is to be taken from the right person. So, yun lang anak mismo. They had the better information. Bakit ginawa nila ito? Because they fear the Jews. Anong tinatakutan nila? Because the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess Jesus to be Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. 
kung may maniwala, malalaman nila na si Kristo po ang Misaya, maniwala, he will be put out out of the synagogue. You know, marami mga naniwala kay Kristo ngayon na hindi sila nagpakilala because they are afraid of their parents, they are afraid of their friends, they are afraid of the repercussions. Pag malaman ako po ay nagbabasa ng Bible, naniwala na po kay Kristo, baka mapituhan yung aking trabaho, aking pag-aaral, o itong mga pribiliyo ko mawala. And because they were coerced. They were coerced by the religious leaders, the Jews. Sadly, ito ang ginagawa na ng mga religious leaders on the guys that they are doing this for God. Nakakalungkot. Even today, there are religious leaders in the guys that they are doing for God had resorted to coercion and manipulation of the flesh. So, maraming mga ganun na grupo ngayon, magbantay tayo. You know, they are going to put down other religion in order just to make it appear na sila yung tama. And then, when somebody within their family na maniwala kay Kristo and they will coerce na, sige, itiwalag ka sa ganitong religion. Or hindi ka na namin suportahan sa edukasyon mo. Yung mga pribilihyo mo sa ganitong ganyan ay hindi na matutupad. And this um, new Christians, new believers are afraid. That's why magsasabi na na pastor, sana mag pa kami ng Bible studies, mag pa kami sa inyong church, pero hindi na lang kasi ganito yung gagawin ng aming um, mga religious leaders sa aming pamilya. Mayroong mga threat sa aming families. Nakakalungkot. When in fact, when they interrogated the man again, coercing him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. Parang direktahan na. Luwalatin mo ng Diyos. Just tell us that Jesus is a sinner. Sa so, ganun lang naparaan o oh, pagsasabi. Sa so, ganyan, ganyan na tone, they are really out of reasons anymore. They are resorting to the works of the flesh, anger, just to put down Jesus here. But they cannot argue a changed life like this blind man who became normal. So, ano ang gagawin natin ngayon? Babala ni, san, ni, ni Juan sa atin is sa so 1 John chapter 4, verse 2 to 3, by this you know that the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, which you heard from, heard was coming and now is in the world already. So bandayan natin. Because there are people today who are coercing those who believe Jesus. And they thought that they are doing this for God. They are so convicted. They are even very aggressive to stand for what is right according to them. Ito yung tama. Panindigan namin ito. And by doing that, they didn't realize they are going against the Lord Jesus Christ. May God will open our eyes. May it be that magkaroon tayo din ng tapang, courage to stand for Christ. Yes, I know some of you maybe had this threat from your parents, maybe some of your friends, like these parents. But let it be that God will give us the courage to stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. Di tayo mahiya sa Kanya. Kasi sabi ni Panginoos Kristo, He who is ashamed of me in this evil and adulterous generation, I will be ashamed of Him also when we will be in glory in heaven. So, hindi natin siya kahiya. Hindi siya nahiya sa atin. Let be that Jesus will be magnified and glorified in our lives. Manalangin tayo. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Bless us our hearts, Lord. It's not easy, Lord, to live for Christ, especially in a very threatening situation like this, that people are coercing us. Oh, some, some of our brothers and sisters, Lord, are threatened in their workplaces, in their schools, in their offices, that if they believe on Jesus or if they believe um, the Bible, they will be stripped of some privileges uh, or some some um, uh, measures, Lord, that 
will give them discomfort. But Lord, thank you that you are our God who can change hearts. Lord, let it be that your name will be honored and glorified even in these difficult circumstances. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.